Hi, welcome back to Off the Shelf Book Talk with Book Lovers. I'm Elizabeth Nelson here with my co-host Kay Johnson. What are you reading this time, Kay? Well, I just finished Ruth, um, I think it's pronounced Reichel, Save Me the Plums, a gourmet memoir. Oh. She was a, the food critic for the New York Times. Okay. When, a restaurant critic. And uh, in 1999, the, one of the head guys at Condé Nast called her up and said, hey, we would like to talk to you. And they offered her the editor-in-chief editor job of Gourmet Magazine. Oh, wow. And anyway, she uh, ended up taking it, and she, she worked at the New York Times. If you work in a newspaper, it's usually like big rooms with mm -hmm. lots of people shoved in. At Condé Nast, it was top of the line, mm -hmm. first class travel, um, your own loft size office, um, huge expense accounts, um, clothing allowance, mm -hmm. you know, so that was a big culture shock for her to go work for these folks. But it was her job to, to bring the magazine into the, the modern age, so mm -hmm. to speak, because for 40 years the magazine had been a high living lifestyle magazine mm -hmm. where people actually wore white gloves. Oh. <laughs> and uh, Ruth kind of wrote in on, on the popularity of the local food movement mm -hmm. and the rise of the food network yeah and all those kinds of things and and so she was introduced to gourmet magazine as a kid because her dad was a book designer mm -hmm. and he'd go to uh use bookstores looking yeah for books and so on and so she'd be kind of left in the corner and she came across a dusty staff of stack of gourmet magazines and started reading them, and, and her mother was bipolar. Okay. And so she would be in bed for months at a time because she'd be depressed. Yeah. So Ruth literally taught herself to cook with oh. gourmet magazines. <laughs> and anyway, then she and her father, he was um, from Germany, and they'd go all over the city kind of looking about food and learning about food yeah. and, and stuff. And, and so then when she ended up, she started writing about food on the West Coast and then was the restaurant critic at the Los Angeles Times and then moved to New York mm -hmm. and then um, followed Gourmet. And, and one of their big things was they wanted a website when websites, the internet started to explode. Because mm -hmm. one of the fastest growing segments in the beginning was recipes. Yeah. And like most media companies, they saw no reason to have a website. And so eventually she did get one, but they had cut a deal with another site so she couldn't post recipes on her site. So there were lots of oh, man. issues like that. And, and she was on a book tour for Gourmet Magazine when she got a call saying she had to come back to New York in, I think it was like 2004, 2005, I'm not sure. And uh, they were pulling the plug on the magazine. Oh. Just like that, they all were in a room, and she thought she was getting fired. And then she thought, well, they wouldn't fire me in front of the whole staff, would no. they? And they said, no, <laughs> we're pulling the plug on the magazine. They gave the staff 24 hours to clear out or their, before their key, key cards were inactivated. Mm. Wow. And stuff. And, uh, yeah, it was a magazine that had been around forever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was a subscriber for a long, long time. And, so, in fact, I was got a card. I remember saying I could get X, Y, and Z because I still had a gourmet oh, yeah. subscription. They would extend it. And, but it was a really sad day because it was a lifestyle magazine, mm -hmm. and it, one of the early ones anyway. And, and so she talks all about that. So there was a lot yeah. of stuff in there I could mm -hmm. identify with and appreciate and understand based on my own experience in newspapers yeah. and magazines and so on. Mm -hmm. But I would really recommend that Save Me the Plums. Um, you might have read, I did a review in the leader mm -hmm. on that book too. So might be one to pick up. Um, I got my copy at the Hutch Leader, or at Hutch, um, <laughs> I have it at the Hutch Leader, but I got it from the Hutch Library. Yeah. <laughs> too many so, HL titles Yeah, it's too many. <laughs> so what else are you reading, Betsy? Well, I just finished um, a book by Elaine Moriarty. It's called The Husband's Secret. Okay. Um, so this book follows three different women and one of the women um, finds a letter that her husband had written to be, and he wrote it, I think, when, like when their first child was born. So the letter itself is like 18 years old. 
but um, he wrote this letter and it's to be opened on the event of his death. Um, Is this one of these with four wives or no two families? Wives. No, 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 no. It's not, no, no polygamy <laughs> plays into this book. But, um, and so then it's, and then when she finds it, he makes such a big, he, tr he plays it off as, oh, it was this letter I wrote you. Don't read it, it's fine. And then whenever she, because he's on a business trip and then every time she talks to him, he asks, you know, again, did you read the letter? And she's like, well, no. And then he comes home early from his business trip and she can hear him going around in the attic like he's looking for it. So then she gets up and she reads it. And then it's how what she finds out affects their life and the lives of these two other women that you're also learning about. So it was, um, but I, I thought it was interesting because, you know, they make such a big deal about, you know, cause she, the lady keeps saying she was going to read the letter. She's going to go home and read the letter and that's something would happen and she wouldn't. So it was like 180 pages into the book before she finally read the letter. And I was like, read the damn read letter. The letter already. <laughs> I want to know what happened. Um, but it was, it was good. I mean, I liked it a lot more. I'd read, um, Truly, Madly, Guiltily by Lane Moriarty, and I didn't like that, and I wasn't 100% sure um, what I would think of this one, but I decided I'll give her another chance because with Big Little Lies out on HBO, you know, she's gotten, her books are kind of in the media right now, so I read it. It was interesting, um, interesting twist on, twists that were involved, and just a real quick read again. But if it um, took 180 mm -hmm. pages to read the letter, dear I know. God. And then it's and then afterwards there were some times where you were like, I don't I don't know if this is really how people would react to this situation. But um, it was it was interesting. I did enjoy it, like I said, um, and it was recommended to me by a friend. Um, and then I also read, kind of following again, as I said in the last episode, I shouldn't read. Gone Girl type books. Well, the current one out by Colleen Hoover is called Verity. And this is a one where uh, there's a lady who's a writer and she is contacted by the husband of a very popular writer whose name is Verity. And just saying that she's been in an accident and they want to hire this other author to finish this book series that she's been writing. So she goes out so she takes that on and she goes to stay with the husband while she goes through the office. She's just going to go up for the weekend and go through the study. And um, so she gets there to find out that Verity was in um, a car accident and is non-responsive and she's still alive and is in the house. And then it's so she starts trying to work through and she finds this manuscript and that paints the author in a very different light than what everybody famili is familiar with and then at the same time strange things start happening that make you wonder if there's more than meets the eye with this couple and living in the house so um and again this was one with a few twists it kind of i this one i did enjoy more than last time i talked about the wife between us that this one was more you could read i think the reading time when it on your Kindle, it tells you how long it normally takes people to read the mm -hmm. book. And this one, it was like three hours. People just kind of zoom, zoom through, through it. it. So, I mean, you consume it really quick and then you're kind of left sitting and going, what did I read? <laughs> what actually happened? And I mean, it's one of those points where there's a part at the end which makes you wonder, did I just get all that wrong? Or is this the lie and all of that was the truth? So it's a very interesting kind of cliffhanger how it ends. But again, it's a quick read. It's one that everybody has been talking about on like social media and different book What's sites. What's the name again? Verity. It's V-E-R-I-T-Y. And it's Colleen Hoover wrote it. And I think it's a couple months old at this point. Okay. But um, it's one that every, I swear every time I would go in to log into like Facebook or I go in somebody is posting a picture of this book or somebody was asking about it so and i i got this book i want to give away oh through a facebook thing so they sent it to me for free and i was like yay free books <laughs> which always makes me happy yeah that's if right. i can get books cheap or free i'm the very happy girl <laughs> so I <hear> you. <laughs> that's how I, we have most of this yeah this is I my to that. be read section <laughs> I get that. Boy, do I get that. Yes. What else have you? 
Um, and reading. Well, you know, Betsy, after waiting six months, I finally got The Library Yay! by Susan Orland. And I can tell you that I thought it was a great Isn't book. Isn't it? A great book. And it's, it's really interesting to me how she uses the... In 1986, the Los Angeles Central Library um, arson started a fire. An arson started a fire and uh, burned a lot of the library. Mm -hmm. Like two million books. Yeah, and not only books, but photographs, periodicals, yeah. Oh, yeah. records. Rare books. Yeah. Maps, all yeah, kinds of stuff. all sorts of stuff. And so, but what's interesting is, is she does not miss a trick. I mean, you hear the history of the library, the history of all the librarians, mm -hmm. the people who work there. Um, I thought the section on overdrive, the ebooks, was yes. particularly yeah, interesting. Yeah, that was interesting. Because um, Hutchinson Pioneerland uses the overdrive, the same um, company that the Los Angeles Public Library uses. Yeah. And what mm -hmm. did they say they, they just, on this book, so it was a while ago, their two billionth checkout or something? Mm -hmm. And I forget how many books they checked out yeah. a day. Thousands and thousands. It's, it's amazing. And, and the amount of programming that goes through the library systems. I mean, it's sort of like pulling back, the you know, pulling the back the curtain, curtain. And seeing everything that goes on behind the scenes. I for a library was, system I thought it was from like the upper part not yeah, so she much never to missed see. a trick though no. every chapter gave you that much more information mm -hmm. about another facet of the library yeah. i mean if you think a librarian does nothing but check out books you are so you wrong you are sadly mistaken yes <laughs> yeah i mean well, I, and the fact that they have like at this library in la there's this section that all people do when they come in is they're moving the books they're like, yes. these are the books that were returned from this branch. These are the books going out to all the other branches. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, and these are all our new books coming in that then, then have to go out to Yeah, it's, it's like a huge clearinghouse yeah. of books mm -hmm. and, and how the, I thought the, the, the whole fire as the mm -hmm. kind of the, the connecting was really interesting because the, the design of the building when it was built was, was cutting edge and, and really, you know, this, this, architectural wonder in the very design of the book encouraged the fire yeah the very design of the layout yeah yeah because the how they talked about it and plus the fact that the you know libraries are tr tremendously underfunded mm -hmm. and so and they weren't able to afford to do the upgrades yeah they so needed, they yeah. didn't have um sprinkle sprinkler systems and of course not that you want one to sprinkle on books mm -hmm. but it was interesting because everything burns so fast mm -hmm. And then the, uh, it made me think of uh, Notre Dame, when Notre yeah. Dame was burning. That must have been what it looked like. But uh, they, the books they were able to salvage, they put in freezers. Like industrial oh, freezers, freezers for like, like fish lockers and places. Yeah. Yeah, to keep, because anything that got wet, that you didn't want it to mold. No. So then it has to go into this. So, so freezing it would, would stabilize it. Mm -hmm. And then they had to. The whole process to thaw everything. Yeah. yeah it was. Yeah, it was a huge <laughs> undertaking. Yeah. And then they might process a book only to find out they can't save it. Yeah. But they took tremendous amounts of water. I mean, everything is so interesting in this book because, I mean, who knew? Well, not only that, but when you're reading about, like, everything in the library burning, like, as a book lover, you're just like, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, that's God, what I no. thought. I mean, literally, I was yeah. in pain. Thinking, I know. It just, like, gets right here. just like, oh. No. And and the Save library the staff was treated for post traumatic stress. Yeah, they were, <laughs> because it was so shocking to them, and yeah. and you know, and there were so many priceless things mm -hmm. lost. And I mean, I was amazed that they even knew what they'd lost mm -hmm. because of everything being burnt up. And and at that time, right. they still had card catalogs. They had not they transitioned had to, to computers. So mm -hmm. I mean, wow. Yeah. It, I thought it was hands down one of the great books I've read. Well, I'm very glad that you enjoyed it after you had to wait so long. Well, and you know, the, the irony of it is, why didn't I just buy it? I mean, why that wouldn't I just good question. buy it? I mean, I have no problem <laughs> buying Lucas Davenport, who I'll never read more than twice. You know, why wouldn't I buy this? A book that I would literally read probably a half a dozen times because mm -hmm. I'm sure there's tons of stuff that I missed the first time yeah. through because you're you're reading it 
And, and the interesting thing is, is that every page is interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, you just, and, yeah. and it's, what's really fascinating to me is, is that when you compare it to like our library here, compared to like 10 years ago, the library is doing so much outreach mm -hmm. compared to, and a lot of that's because of legacy money that's available. But here they talk about uh, bringing social services mm -hmm. into the library for homeless people to register. And I thought that was really a yeah. great idea. Mm -hmm. But you know, here we have all this children's programming now that they didn't used to have. They have stories in the park and they have lots of author visits mm -hmm. and it's just amazing. Yeah, it is. Because, you know, when you're trained as a librarian, I don't, I think they teach you the Dewey Decimal System. I don't know that <laughs> you're supposed to be in charge of, like, activities. <laughs> I should ask Katie Hiltner at the library. Katie, did you study activities? Mm -hmm. But it, it's, it's really a fascinating book, and it's, mm -hmm. it's The Library by Susan Orlin, and I highly, highly recommend it. Her last book she wrote was um, The Life and Times, I think, of Rin Tin Tin. I think so, yeah. And, but the book is just... You're, you're sad when it's done because mm -hmm. she literally exhausts, I mean, any question you have, she answers. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is no stone unturned in this book. <laughs> I mean, she covers everything from, she does. and you know, it's interesting too, the, the social, the, the times, because they literally fired a woman to give a man her job. Back in the history yes. of the library, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it was one of the lady, the lady we're talking about. I think she was even one of the very first female, female librarians. librarians. Yeah, and, and, and they, they fired they, her because. But then they she kept coming to work. Be, yeah, for quite a while before they finally <laughs> they got did. it all straightened out, and she was really. I think she pretty much just said no. No, she walked out, and I was like, you "Go, girl." Go you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> but it it really mm -hmm. was a fascinating read, and and. Uh, Every, every page was good, but boy, that fire at the library was just like, oh my yeah. gosh. I couldn't mm -hmm. imagine. Yeah. Well, following the kind of get you in the feels, I have finished um, the book Everything, Everything by Nicola Yoon. And this is recently made into a movie as well, but it follows, um, there's a, it's a girl who just turned 18 and she's grown up with you know, that bubble boy syndrome where you're allergic to everything and you oh. have to be in a concealed space. And there is a guy that moves in next door who's her age and it sort of becomes a love triangle. And then at one point she decides she's gonna go see, she's gonna leave and she leaves and then it's everything. And then at her coming back um, her leaving and coming back sets more into motion, which, and again, and there's a twist in there, but it was one of those just real tender kind of pull at your heartstring books. And like I said, it was recently made into a movie um, also. But I really What's like it called? One. Everything, Everything. So, and it, I mean, so she's eight, she, when the book starts, she's, it's her 18th birthday. So she spent 18 years in the same house with just her, and her mom, her mom is a doctor, and then she has a live-in nurse. And then some of her tutors will come in and visit, but otherwise she's never left her house. And it's how the family moving in next door, and she starts emailing with the boy and wanting more. <laughs> so it's, it is a young adult book, um, but very, and then there are different images and different stuff written as IM messages or emails or okay. that sort of stuff as well. But yeah, really, and that was a quick read as well too. I mean, probably most things, everybody hears me say that and they probably just figure it's out. It's all relative, fast. Betsy. It is. I've been reading a lot recently. I've been reading a lot. So I'm almost done with my challenge for the year, unlike last year. I think for, I looked at my Goodreads challenge and I've read... 85 books so far this year. And wow, you might be able to double it. So I might get to pass my goal this year. And like last year where I didn't make my goal, I missed it by five books, but we'll see. So 100, is that your goal? 100 is my goal. Since I didn't win, make the goal last year, I decided to leave it. So now you're going to hit in June. Maybe. <laughs> July at the latest. Well, we'll see. Who knows? I keep my fingers crossed. Though so moving does hinder reading a bit. But thank goodness for audiobooks. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. And, and mm -hmm. you know, if you do sign up for the summer reading program, mm -hmm. there's adults, children, and teens. Mm -hmm. And um, audiobooks account. Mm -hmm. 
It isn't just uh, yeah. paper books. I know. That's well. That's always the big debate when you look at like people online. They're like, "Do you count audiobooks towards your reading goal?" And it's somebody's. Somebody just finally said, "I'm just going to delete these posts from the group because you people just get mean, <laughs> because people are apparently very into people are feel very strongly about if an audiobook is a book or if it is not a book." It's very interesting See, to, to me, listen to. I think it is. Yeah, well, Tom told me I'm not allowed to say I read it. I have to say I've consumed it because I've listened to it as opposed to reading it. He's like, you didn't read that book. And I was like, well, I listened to it. He's like, but you don't listen when you read. And I was like, it's, I said, you can't really just say reading is looking because if it was just looking, you wouldn't call it reading. No, because you... It's a different sort of an experience. Yeah, you hear things but, and mm -hmm. you see things yeah. and you... If you're creative mm -hmm. and you have an interesting mind. Yeah, I've always liked that um, there's a meme that's been on Facebook a few times where it says, it shows a person closing a book and it says the feeling when you finish a book and realize that the rest of the world around you hasn't been affected. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I can totally relate to that. Oh, you yeah, because like, sometimes oh. I'm really depressed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the library, for yes. instance. It was like, oh, mm -hmm. man. I know. You, because I do tend to plow through them quickly because I really want to know. Yeah. And I do consume those types of books. <laughs> you know, and then when I get to the end, it's like. <sighs> Why did I do that to myself? But, mm -hmm. like, the library is a book that I would reread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not right away, but down the road I would. Because I'm sure that a lot of it hasn't stuck because there was, there's so much information in yeah. that book. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think it's that way, you know, like I said, with Verity, that's almost a book you'd want to go back and read just to make sure, just to see if there's any other clues or things that you could pick up on that you might have missed because you were trying to figure out what yes. was happening. Well, I think that, yeah, <laughs> a good mystery that, that can happen because if it's, a well, well, if you've read enough mysteries, mm -hmm. which I feel I have, you can often mm -hmm. pick up the red herrings yeah. as you're reading through. Mm -hmm. You'll think, oh, that's significant. I better remember yeah. that. Well, and that's kind of the thing with the, this Charlie Davidson series that I'm reading by Dorinda Jones. Um, Charlie, the main character, is a real kind of sarcastic person. And so it's listening to it, you kind of think that the writing has it where the writer is telling, you know what's happening before Charlie knows. Okay. It's sort of the thing, because it'll be like, you know, her father makes a reference in one of the books to with the time he has left. And she's like, well, what the heck is he talking about? And you're like, well, you said earlier he looked tired. And now you're saying he doesn't have a lot of time left. So everybody else has sort of figured out, well, obviously he's dying. Yes. <laughs> but she's still like, I don't know what he's going on about. And it's just kind of like, okay. Or she'll make references to that she doesn't know why he had... Well, he, I think he's mad, and I don't know why. He, he's mad at me for some reason. It's like, well, yeah, but you did just do this. So that's why he's mad at you. So it's kind of like maybe you know a little more about what's going on than Charlie does. And what's which the is name of that book, Betsy? The, um, the, the first, they've all got grave in them. The first, one is, the first book is The First Grave on the Left, um, and then the rest of them all have some kind of variation to that. Um, I think the second one is second grave on the right, and then there's fifth grade, fifth grave dead ahead. Okay. So they're all something like that, and they've all got the Grim Reaper scythe on oh, the cover okay. with either sunglasses or a belt buckle or something, because she's kind of just. She's. she's I think. She, I think it's kind of interesting that, you know, she would be probably. She would probably get along really well with Jim Butcher. Ah, yeah, probably. Your character, your favorite, Jim Butcher's books. They would, they would, Dresden. I think that there would be a lot of problems if Dresden and Charlie Davidson got together. I don't know what those two could accomplish, <laughs> but now I really kind of want to see that. <laughs> well, I wish Jim Butcher would come out with a new book. I keep checking. Mm -hmm. Hasn't happened yet, but there's hope this year. Oh, goodness. Well, I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. Yeah, I think it's yeah. peace. I think it's called Peace Something, and it's a Dresden book. Okay. It's supposed to be coming out any time, so we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, and he usually publishes like the first couple chapters. Oh, okay. He'll post those. Yeah. So you can read those. Well, maybe, well, you know, maybe he's taking a leaf out of George R.R. R. Martin's book. Oh, Lord. So that is how it is. Oh. But, um, that's going to do it for us this week. So if you've got anything you want us to read or talk about on a show, shout, uh, give us a message on Facebook or Instagram or send us an email at offtheshelfbooktalk at gmail.com. We'll see you next time. Thank you.
Thank you.